Welcome back to day 65 of my VW Touareg experience. It is finally summer, so it's time to put on some summer tires and wheels. Welcome back, everybody. So glad to have you here. The VW Touareg is into day 65, and so far, so good. After that one check engine light I had about a month ago, nothing has popped up. We are at 246,000 kilometers and no issues, driving great. But today is not about the reliability of this vehicle. No, it is about the wheels and lack thereof, because right now I've got some winners on here that I desperately need to change out. It is getting very hot. You can see I'm in t-shirts and, sh and shorts. So without further ado, let me show you what I have for a wheel and tire package because I'm super excited about it. And bam, here they are. Custom made Momo 19 by nine and a half RF20 wheels wrapped in Continental Conti Sport Contact 5 tires. I really wanted something different for the Touareg and something that you don't see on most SUVs. And I think these wheels fit the bill. I'm absolutely in love with the matte gunmetal finish on them. If you just have a look, they're beautiful. And I really like the mesh design of the spokes. They are so stunning. I can't wait to mount them up. And for tires, I went with Continental's Conti, Conti Sport Contact 5s. These are a 420 treadwear rating, so they are a summer tire. So they're gonna provide excellent performance in the dry and the rain. But also, they, from what, the reviews that I read, they provide great low noise on the highway, which is something I am looking for. And I went with a 255-55 R19 size that should match up well with the 275-45-20 that's on there right now. So without further ado, let's get these mounted up and see what they look like. Oh wow, check out my Renline lug nuts. What happened to the finish? It's all but gone. It's a little bit of rust showing, not cool for two months. I mean, lug nuts should be all season. I get that these are Porsche lug nuts. They're supposed to be motorsport grade ones, so maybe there's no coating on them, but still, oh well, anyways. Coming off are these Continental Conti Winter Contacts. They were a great tire for me. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of you are have the burning question of why am I going to 19s when these are 20, the factory original 20 inch diameter. And that is because A, I find these ride a little bit of harsh, uh, ride harsh. So I'm kind of curious to see how 19s ride with a taller sidewall. And I also kind of like the 19 inch look. I know some of you are gonna think I'm crazy, but I do like the taller sidewall for uh, SUVs and whatnot. So we're gonna give those a try. However, before we put the, the new wheels on, I wanna actually measure these, or I'm sorry, weigh these to see what the difference is between the 20s and the 19s. What I've got for my weighing device is essentially a luggage scale. We don't have any tire or car scales around here. So this is as good as it's gonna get. Whew. 71 pounds on the button. So let's do the Momo next and let's see where it's at. It already feels pretty light. Wow, look at that locked in right away at 61.3. So that is almost 10 pounds, which in my opinion is a massive savings in the wheel world. But I have kept you waiting long enough. Let's get these mounted up and see what they look like. Wow, do they look good. I am beyond excited. Damn, I think the gun metal matches exceptionally well to the body color. It is just a hair off, but you can't expect them to be perfect. Uh, I should mention once again, these are 19 by nine, custom made by Momo with a 40 offset. So they fit absolutely flush the rear as well. Would you look at that? And how about those Continental Conti Sport Contact 5s? 
Man, are they a good looking tire. I'm super excited I went with them. I think they give the truck a pretty aggressive look in terms of street tires. There's a lot of SUV tires out there that I find look a little too off-roadish and these are definitely the opposite of that. I've got to give a big shout out to Burning Rubber Tire and Speed in Oakville who mounted these wheels and tires up on their Hunter Road Force machine. So these are not going to vibrate. I had an issue with the 20s before. So these are going to be top notch. And more importantly, what they did put in were TPMS sensors. And these aren't OEM ones, these are aftermarket. However, these ones are a fraction of the cost. And what they do is they clone the OEM ones, meaning that when you swap tires, the light doesn't come on because you don't need to get them reprogrammed. So it's a really great way to have winter tires and summer wheels at the same time without having to go through the whole hassle of programming them. I think it's time we go for a drive and see the difference between the 19s and 20s. However, before we do that, I have one last surprise for you. I spent some time looking around for aftermarket aero lips or spoilers, and really, there's nothing that looks good. There are some companies out there that make some stuff, but uh, they're a little wild over the top. So what I settled with was one add-on item that for this uh, SUV, and that is a rear spoiler that's going to go up top here and this is actually a factory vw piece i had luke over at 242 customs paint it i don't know if this comes on our models or different specs but it certainly didn't come on this one so we're going to add this on and i think it's going to give it a much sportier look simplest install ever some 3m tape and it is on of course it being factory vw fits like a charm and I think it is a subtle look, but gives it the rear end a more aggressive flavor. Check that out. Uh, the one thing I noticed when I moved this truck is look at the stance. Man, this thing has a lot more presence than it did with the 20s, which were a 50 plus offset. So they were actually sunken in a little bit. All right, enough talking. Let's get on the road and see how this thing drives. Well, everybody, it has been over a month actually since I installed the wheels and tires. And I really wanted to get a sense of the difference between the 20s and the 19s. So that's why I didn't do a quick drive afterwards because I felt like an immediate uh, driving of the vehicle wouldn't really give me an accurate idea. And I've got to say the most notable, noticeable difference is the lack of weight in the steering and over bumps. So the, that 10 pounds per wheel has proved to be significant. It has really changed the driving experience and not in necessarily a dramatic way, but the, the SUV doesn't crash over bumps, especially large bumps and potholes. You just don't have that mass, so it absorbs it much better. The larger sidewall also helps. Uh, so in my opinion, I am more than happy about the change to the smaller diameter wheel and tire. Uh, so it, it does drive better in my opinion. And more so, as I said, the, the crashing over the bumps is a big thing, but I just find it livening the car up. And it's not faster, it's not noticeably faster, but the agility of the vehicle is there. And that to me is, is what I like as the most important thing that has come of the wheel and tire upgrade. Obviously looks wise, it looks fantastic. Uh, the more that I own this vehicle with this wheel and tire package, the more I like it. It's definitely unique. The mesh design of those Momos is absolutely spectacular in my opinion. So certainly a worthwhile upgrade. Now, I also did one other thing that I wasn't planning on putting in this episode, but that is a transmission tune. And I found a guy on the forums by the name of Joe. I'll make sure to put his contact information in the description below. And what he does is he takes the transmission ECM and retunes it to a pre-diesel gate tune. And let's cut to me driving the vehicle beforehand so you guys can get an idea of how it drives uh, before I get into my whole experience of what it feels like now. This is the post 
diesel gate fix tune and um, I just find it hunts, uh, the RPM hunts a little bit more. Uh, it's almost like the torque converter is allowing a lot more slip. So when you're moving, you kind of feel sluggish. Um, see, as you leave, it kind of, see there, right there, it's got like this almost weird little hesitation. I can feel it when I'm adding throttle and whatnot. Uh, definitely not a byproduct of the tune. It's certainly a transmission thing. See, as you're getting moving, the shifts are nice and then there's that little bit of a hang. But man, that tour comes on quick. And here we are back again. So as I said, it's been over a month since I've done these modifications, including the trans tune. And right away, you'll see as I leave the line, the, the most immediate difference between the pre and the post tune is I feel the torque converter locks up much better so you don't get as much slippage and that was my biggest complaint and it's beneficial in many many ways the driving experience in my opinion is so much better so when you start slowing down and you turn in and you get on the throttle it picks up nicer it doesn't have like this weird lag where the transmission revs up so it's really really nice in that aspect uh, the downside to that is though uh, it can get weird in situations where you you have kind of it, it holds the gear longer and it doesn't want to downshift quicker so if you lay into the power quickly sometimes it says no you know what I'm actually not going to downshift here what I'm gonna do is stay in the gear and you're gonna have this lag before the power builds up and then you get going so I found that to be the only downside to the tune. Otherwise, I've been absolutely in love with it. I think it's fantastic. I, I definitely recommend it to anybody that doesn't really like the way uh, the car shifts stock SUV. So you can see, and if I like lean into it here, see a little bit of lag, it doesn't downshift, but then it picks up and goes. So really nice, definitely uh, recommended in my opinion. Um, the other thing that I'll say is I didn't really notice a difference in gas mileage. Uh, there's a lot of people that say, oh, that the tune will help with gas mileage tremendously. I didn't see that per se. So I'm kind of stuck with the same gas mileage as I have been getting. And it's still very good. Uh, if you're interested in how this whole process works, you ship Joe, actually Joe will ship you a TCM and what you do is you pay a core charge and then once you swap that in, you ship yours back to him. Um, so there's no downtime in that sense and the install is fairly simple, which actually I shot a little bit of a video, so let's cut to that right now so you see how that goes. So now to install this, what we're gonna have to do is uh, move the seat up. I think it's down up underneath in that area. It shouldn't be too difficult. Some people say you can do it without taking the seat off, but I'm just gonna remove the four bolts like I did on the on the driver's side. It'll be much easier. We'll be able to get at it. We'll swap this out. Four bolts later, our seat is up and our TCM is down in this area here. However, I've noticed I can't actually remove the carpet. There's these small little pieces of carpet right here that are holding it in place, especially on that side where I need to get at. So what I'm gonna do is actually just cut them right here with a razor blade and we'll be able to peel this whole carpet back and we'll see what we're working with. In order to remove the TCM here, it's a little bit finicky, but there's like these two little tabs. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show this to you because it's right underneath in this area here, but up here and here on the uh, transmission, there are these two tabs that hold it in place on this side and on this side here. What you need to do is just go under there pull it away and this will pop out and there we have it. Here is our new flashed TCM and I think it is as simple as putting it in place here, just like that. Putting this back on, bam. And we're gonna slide this back underneath, get it situated, locked in place and we are done. And just like that, we have come to the wrap of another VW Touareg episode. 
thank you so much for watching. I hope you found some of this information useful. If you're looking for any of the products mentioned in this video, definitely check down below in the video description. And from here on out, I think the mods are kind of done for the Touareg, but I'll be sure to bring you a lot more updates, maybe like every six months as to how the vehicle's been performing and working well for me. But overall, this truck has been outstanding. It was a great value purchase. It's amazing on gas, it tows, and it drives well. So all in all, I definitely recommend it. So give me a thumbs up if you like this video and make sure to subscribe. I do find the 20s ride a little harsh, so I wanted to try out the 19s. And I also kind of like the look.